change my heart, oh God. Make it ever true. Change my heart, oh God. May I be like you. You are the power. So thank you. Thank you for being with us today. And um, I, I am very pleased that we do have this opportunity to get together. And, and it's just to matter, even though we're not in the same room, we all know who we all are. And we can feel that energy of one another, you know, as we watch at our own convenience. Um, this message and listen to the beautiful music and say our own prayers. So just um, thank you. Thank you for being with us and for continuing to support Unity of Beaverton. If you go on our website, you will see a donate spot there. And um, we really, really appreciate your continued support. As um, you know, we go through these times. What I want to tell you that it's what we're finding is several of our renters are continuing to pay their rent even though they're not here during this time. And uh, so um, I want you to include them in your gratitude. So thank you. Thank you all. So now if we'll all just go within oh, and let us say this prayer for our country and for the world and both in healing physically but emotionally and um, you know uh, intelligently as well let us know that we have an opportunity here to become someone different to be changed from within and it's not about getting them to change. It's not about getting the government to change or the other to change. It is finding the change within us and making it from within by the only means that is truly, truly a way to make a difference in who we are and that is through your connection with the divine. 
and being able to transcend anything that is going on in your physical material life. Allow your spiritual life to be what magnifies. Magnify the love that you receive and so that you are able to give more. Magnify the compassion so that you are able to be more compassionate. Let us seek, as St. Francis said, to understand rather than to be understood. It's up to each of us to heal our country. We cannot wait for the other to do it. We must begin by forgiveness. Forgiveness of ourselves, forgiveness of others, and coming to that realization that we are all one and that we need to walk together. So if you come across somebody in your mind who you feel says, well, I don't want to walk with you, that's all right. In your imagination, grab their hand and walk with them. And just be there in your imagination with their heart, with their spirit, and bless them. I promise it is you who will receive the blessings. So let us heal. We know that this is all possible by means of our relationship with the divine, with our relationship with spirit, our relationship with God. So thank you, God. Thank you, God, for this guidance, this love, and this intelligence which guides, which guides us going forward in healing the world. Amen. And so it is. Good morning. Welcome to Unity of Beaverton. This is our regular Sunday service, and this has become the regular way that we do the Sunday service during this time of staying home and keeping safe. So we are gathered on Facebook, and we are gathered on YouTube, and wherever else this video finds you. And um, know that we will be back together here shortly in our beautiful sanctuary. I want to begin by saying thank you, as always, to Dan Carruthers and all the work that he has done. I think you're going to really enjoy the music this weekend. So um, sit back and relax. And we will start by reading our daily word for today. And our uh, words for today are world peace. And the affirmation is, I contribute to peace in the world. When I learn of conflict in my community or in the world, my response may be frustration, sadness, or anger. If I have those feelings, I remember that I am more than merely human. I remember that I am more than merely human. I am a living expression of God, heir to all that God is. I use my divine faculties of wisdom, understanding, and love to create the abiding peace that is my birthright. Centered in divine peace, I realize that every person is as much as expression of God as I am. As differences dissolve in a way that transcends human understanding, I come to know oneness with all the world's people. I come to know oneness. That's amazing. 
I come to know oneness with all the world's people, and I let this realization shape my response to every person and every situation. In an awareness of oneness with all people, my thoughts, words, and actions contribute to the peace in the world. And the quote is, The glory that you have given me, I have given them, so that they may be one, as we are one. And that's from John 17, 22. So, um, let's, let's do a prayer, and then we'll go into meditation. Mm. Holy Mother, Father God, We bless you for life. We thank you for life. And we hold our own lives dear. We know that each and every one of us is an expression of your divine nature. Each and every one of us has within us that pure Power to create our lives by knowing who we are, by accepting who we are. Jesus walked this earth just to tell us of this amazing, amazing truth that God and I are one. Say that with me now. God and I are one. Those are probably the most powerful words that we can speak at any time, but especially at a moment of difficulty. To rather turn away from that difficulty and take a few moments and sit in that oneness and allow that oneness to begin to inform you of what is possible, of what is yours to do, and to know the courage and the strength to carry that out. Thank you, God, for this level of understanding that we grasp, each one of us, of our own level of understanding. And wherever we are on that scale of understanding, we know that we are growing deeper and deeper into this understanding. So I say, thank you, God, and I release this word, and so it is. So if you just take a moment and be in the oneness. We have um, a few announcements. We are continuing with um, the daily Zoom call that is Monday to Friday at noon. It is on the website. I heard that it was incorrect and have since corrected it. Um, So that is on www.unityofbeaverton.org. You just scroll down the page a little bit and you will see it as what is coming up. There is also a... uh, Call on Wednesdays at 2 o'clock, 
and that is with the Healing Intention Group. And there is a phone number that is associated with that that is also on the website. And that is a phone call, so the phone number and the ID are included on the web page. So you can um, take and be a part of that healing, intentional healing group that meets every Wednesday for two hours at two o'clock. So we will continue meeting like this until, you know, we feel that it is safe to come together. And um, I think that'll be a little while yet. I, I can't see us gathering here in the sanctuary um, for the rest of May, but, you know, we'll leave that open and see how things unfold. And we will be present and ready whenever um, you are all ready to return. And we all feel that it's safe. So... Um, my topic for today, for this month, is curiosity. Um, you know that, that unity has a theme, and it's seeing through a lens of clarity, seeing with 2020 spiritual vision. And so that is how we um, are going through this year, and each month we have a new topic. And this one, as I said, is curiosity. And so that has been on my mind a lot today. And um, one of the things I decided to do was look up the word curiosity. And as I started to type it, I glanced down below, and there was a word connected with it, and it said stream. So I thought, oh, I wonder what that is. So I typed in Curiosity Stream, and I found um, a channel that you can, you know, um, get to on your smart TV or if you have one of those little fire boxes or Roku. And um, it is absolutely lovely. It is a whole channel of documentaries. And... Um, this week, what they had was a, um, a week of for teachers, and there were five different episodes on what it means to be a teacher. And I've set it aside. I haven't looked at it yet, but um, I think it will be wonderful to watch. Queen Latifah is who is moderating it, and I'm very fond of her and um, find her to be brilliant. So I'm sure that this will be a brilliant documentary. I'm watching um, for an hour or so today. I watched a documentary, a six episode, I only watched one, on the history of Europe and how Europe came into being, going all the way back, you know, to the Neanderthals. I, I, I really love that stuff. I love um, getting a spark of an idea and looking something up and seeing where it takes me. Now, I had no idea. This is not what I was looking for at all. I was, I was looking for something to, you know, kind of uh, pique my interest um, and give me some thoughts about my message. But this is what came up, and so I just kind of went with it and had just a lovely time, and I was so taken with it and with all of the things that were available on this channel that I decided to send my granddaughter, who is a teacher, and her son a subscription. And then I also sent my other grandson, who is 10 years old, a subscription, because they love all the science and all that kind of stuff. So I thought they might enjoy that. And I think about being a child and being curious. And if you were a child, um, as I was in the 50s, one of the things that you may have had the opportunity to watch was Disneyland. Of course, on, I think it was on, on Sunday nights that we watched it. And they would do documentaries occasionally. And my very favorite that was on, and it was on a few different times, were about the Oh my God, I don't know what the birds are called, but I think on the Galapagos Islands or something, Goonie Birds, and the way that they, they when they land, you know, and when they take off, they take off running, and these wings are like eight foot span, and they just keep flapping them and flapping, and they have to run really 
fast to take off. And then they do the same thing when they land. It's like they go, you know, all spinning and falling all over the place when they... That, that was something that piqued my curiosity as a child. Because if this exists, wherever that was that Disney was bringing that to us from, what else? What else was out there that we didn't know anything about? Well, in the 50s, you know, <laughs> there was so much we didn't know anything about. And when you look at where we have come in this past 70 years... I can't even believe I said that. 70 years. Um, the seven decades. It, it is awe-inspiring. Absolutely awe-inspiring of what has transpired and what has become common knowledge for all of us in this day and age. And it all began from the beginning of time. It began with somebody's curiosity. Somebody asked a question. How would that work? Why does that go like that? What if? What if? And out, out of that, we have developed the most incredible health care. We have developed technology that is far beyond the imagination that most of us had in those days of the 50s and 60s. We have landed on the moon. We have uh, that um, satellite that takes all the pictures uh, the Hubble, and we still get pictures back. They, they post it, and, and you know, every now and then, somebody posts a whole bunch of NASA, I suppose, is who posts it. Yeah, NASA posts some of the most beautiful pictures from the Hubble. And, and they're always different. I mean, it changes all the time, these pictures that that, that thing sends back even yet of things that there was no concept of. There was no concept of space in what we are finding that exists with these billions and billions and billions of galaxies. There was one picture of a nebulous, a nebulae, you know, that was like four thousand light years long. That's kind of mind-boggling. That is not kind of. It is mind-boggling. I don't even know what a light year is, but it's a long, lot of space, a lot of space. And so, you know, if, and it's all been we have to we have to put this in context it's all been human minds human minds that have asked these questions minds like yours and mine who have said what if you know and we in our own time can think of the people who said what if we have martin luther king who said what if what if we just peacefully let white America know that we're here too. What if? What if, you know, a hundred years ago, what if we gave women the vote? What if? It's, what if? We haven't come close to the end of the what-ifs. We are not even to the middle of the what-ifs. This question is 
infinite in its scope. And each and every one of us have the opportunity to ask those questions. We can ask those questions about the mundane, and we can ask them about some very, very important things. So I was asking myself today, what, um, what are the things I should say what if about? And um, I thought about when I have a disagreement with somebody, and I've told you, I've told you, I don't know how many times, you know, this thing I have about being right, that when um, I get my cackles up or whatever you want to call that, you know, I just really know that I'm right. I am so certain. And, and I really do ask a lot of what ifs about that. I'm really uh, attempting to get ahead of it instead of having to do it afterwards but to get ahead of that and say, what if, what if I'm not the only one who's right? That would be, that would be such a major step for me. What if I'm not the only one who's right? What if I just listened? I wonder what I would hear if I just listened to what's being said here. If I listened for what's underneath what is being said, maybe, maybe I could hear the feelings or hear the pain or the love that is under those words. So I, I um, you know, I think it's an important, an important place to start with everything that I wish to do. Um, I, I would like to share with all of us that, you know, that we begin to ask the question um, about our church. What if? What if we all came together and put our brains and our minds together to um, make this church a place of education, a place of spiritual development open to anybody that wants to come in here and seek more answers than what they have. What if, what if we were open to all questions about spirituality? What if we had a couple of classes where we shared with people who have different beliefs than us? And, and had them explain what they're coming, where they're coming from, and, and so that we hear in a way that what we begin to see is where we're the same. Wouldn't that be marvelous? There is so much to learn. And, um, you know, uh, what I realized is what that curiosity has been pushing me now for the last almost 40 years um, of my life. And um, it's, it's gotten more intense. I am your, more curious now than I used to be. Um, I am more curious about our faith and who the teachers were and what informed them. I want to study what our teachers studied. I want to know what our teachers know. And out of that, you know, to be able then to take and um, incorporate all that in me and then come out with something that is mine, that I was informed of by means of this curiosity. I want to know what you come up with by means of your curiosity. I want to understand what is going on with you and what it is you want to know and what you wonder about. So I think that this month we will practice being curious. As we go forward in the next few weeks, we're going to be asking a lot of questions and not given many answers because I think the point is for each of us to find our own answers. I, 
I don't have anybody's answers. You know, I, I really don't. What, what I know is that if I pray with you, if I pray for you, and we, you know, do that together, that, that um, I can invoke, because of my faith, the word of God. I can invoke that power that is instilled in me as it is in you through my faith and my strength. So that is what I know, but I don't know what you need. You know that. But together, when we have a conversation, we can discover what it is you need. You can come upon it because it's there in you. It's always been there. Every answer you need is already in you. And, and we can prompt each other. We can ask questions and help one another uncover whatever it is that may be blocking our view. So I hope that you will be with us the rest of this month and um, send in questions. I would love to hear your questions and see your questions that we can ponder together. I would like to hear not just your questions, but what you think about those questions, you know, and how you arrived at those conclusions, and what else are you still wondering about? I know I have so many of those, so many areas that I still wonder and want to know and want to keep seeking. And I think that that would be a great thing for us to do together, to be seekers. Thank you. Strong, courageous, and mighty. 
Yeah. 